So let's discuss the concept of formal charge. Formal charge is a fictitious uh, bookkeeping tool, and I have spelled fictitious wrong. There should be a U in there, but nevertheless, it is a fictitious bookkeeping tool. So it's not real, but it is definitely useful. And basically what it is, is it's the charge that an atom would have if electronegativity differences are ignored. So in the case of hydrogen chloride, we've seen uh, from previous videos that this bond here is going to be polarized towards the chlorine because it's more electronegative. So the chlorine is going to hog up more of that electron density that's shared between these two atoms. However, when we calculate formal charges, the formal charges of both of these atoms turn out to be zero. So let's get into the formula for how to calculate formal charge. To calculate the formal charge of any atom, you take the number of valence electrons that that atom has, which if it's a main group element, that's as easy as just looking up the group number number of valence electrons minus the number of formal electrons that that atom has. So basically what formal electrons are is they can be thought of as electrons that are owned by an individual atom. And the way that we calculate that is we take two per lone pair and one per shared pair around that atom. So if we go back to the case of hydrogen chloride, the chlorine atom owns all of its lone pair electrons formally but it owns only one of the electrons that are shared between the two atoms. And the hydrogen also, uh, the hydrogen owns the other electron that's shared between the two atoms. So um, before I go through a couple of examples, I'd like to go over a couple of rules uh, when working with formal charges. The first rule is that uh, the sum of all your formal charges in, in your molecule or ion must equal the overall charge of that molecule or ion. So if it's a molecule, then the sum of the formal charges must equal zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, then the sum of the formal charges must equal whatever the charge is of that particular ion. And secondly, the best Lewis structure has the fewest number of non-zero formal charges. So if you have these two or three competing Lewis structures, you want to choose the one that has the fewer number of non-zero formal charges, okay? So let's go through a couple of examples where we calculate some formal charges. So this is the Lewis structure for water. Uh, let's calculate the formal charge of every atom in this thing. So let's start with this hydrogen. The formal charge of this hydrogen is going to be the number of valence electrons, which is, whoops, I'm going off the screen here. The, the formal charge of this hydrogen is going to be the number of valence electrons, which is one, hydrogen's in group one, so it has one valence electron, minus the number of formal electrons that it has, which is two per lone pair, one per shared pair, right? There's only one shared pair, and it's one per shared pair, so you'll get one minus one, which is zero. Now let's calculate the formal charge of the oxygen atom. The formal charge of the oxygen atom is going to be the number of valence electrons that that atom has, which oxygen is in group six, so it has six valence electrons. And now we have to, uh, we have to uh, subtract away the formal electrons. So the formal electrons is going to be two per lone pair, one per shared pair. Uh, let's start with the lone pairs. There are two lone pairs, and it's two per lone pair, so two times two plus the shared pair electrons. There are two shared pairs, and it's one, one electron per shared pair, so it's going to be one times two, one per shared pair, and there's two shared pairs. So six uh, minus the quantity of two times two plus so this is going to be four plus two so this whole term is going to be six so it's going to be six minus six or zero. And uh, the formal charge on this hydrogen is going to be it's going to turn out being the same as the other one. We're going to get the number of valence electrons which is one minus the number of formal electrons. This hydrogen has the same number of formal electrons than this hydrogen, which is just one. So the formal charge on all three atoms 
turns out to be zero, which makes sense because this is a, a it's a molecule, so it you know the sum of the formal charges must equal zero, and indeed they do. Uh, so let's go uh, over another example. Um, how about the uh, Lewis structure for uh, nitrate ion, NO3 minus? So let's just uh, let's just start from the beginning and just do the Lewis structure uh, completely. So the skeletal structure with the least electronegative atom in the center is going to be this. That is our skeletal structure. And if we count up the total number of electrons in this thing, uh, we'll end up getting uh, five, uh, nitrogen has five, oxygen has six, and there are three of them. Six times three. And then we have to add one electron because there's a negative charge. And uh, that's going to end up being 24 valence electrons. Divide that by two, we'll get 12 electron pairs. And to start using up these electron pairs, we're going to put two electrons in between every two atoms. So there's one pair, two pair, three pairs. 12 minus 3 is nine electron pairs. Now we have to add lone pairs to the more electronegative atoms, uh, giving octets to as many as we can. So we have nine left. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've used up all the electrons. Now what we have to do is we have to um, we have to form double bonds as necessary to give octets to everything. Uh, right now, all of the oxygen atoms have an octet, but the nitrogen does not. So it looks to me like we can put one of the lone pair electrons from one of the uh, oxygens into the bonding region um, to make something like this. And now it seems as if uh, everything has an octet. Um, now let's calculate formal charges. So notice that we have two oxygens that appear equivalent, but then we have one that is not equivalent to the other two. We also have a nitrogen. We have to calculate the formal charge of that thing too. So let's start with that central nitrogen. What is the formal charge of that? So the formal charge of this nitrogen is going to be... Uh, let's see, the number of valence electrons that ni uh, nitrogen has is 5, It's because it's in group 5, and then uh, 5 minus the number of formal electrons, 2 per lone pair, 1 per shared pair. It uh, looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4 shared, pair. the uh, shared pairs. The, the double bond counts as uh, 2 shared pairs. Okay, So it looks like we're going to have 5 minus 4, which is equal to positive 1. So the nitrogen doesn't have a uh, zero formal charge. It has a, a, a charge of plus one. So I'm just going to stick that in right here. Uh, let's start with uh, this oxygen, or let's, let's uh, continue with this oxygen up here. Let's calculate the formal charge on that. The formal charge on this oxygen is going to be, uh, let's see, oxygen has six valence electrons minus the number of formal electrons. And two per lone pair, one per shared pair. Let's start with the lone pairs. There are two lone pairs, so two times two. And then we're going to add to that the number of shared pair electrons, and there are two shared pairs, so one times two. Two shared pairs, one electron per shared pair. And this kind of looks like the uh, oxygen that we um, in, in water, doesn't it? two lone pairs, two shared pairs. This whole term in brackets is going to be six. Six minus six equals zero. So the formal charge on this oxygen then is zero. And now uh, we're going to move on to the other two oxygens. And it's a safe assumption since these two oxygens are equivalent that they're going to have uh, like formal charges. Um, that's That'll always be true. Um, if you have two atoms that have the same electrons around them and the same you know number of bonds and number of sh number of lone pairs and number of shared pairs then they're gonna have the same formal charge so all we have to do really is calculate the formal charge on one of them and then we'll have the same you know that same formal charge for both of them so the formal charge then is going to be uh, six electrons six valence electrons from oxygen minus the number of formal electrons so two per lone pair one per shared pair uh, we have three lone pairs 
So that's going to be the quantity of 3 times 2. And then we have to add uh, the shared pair electron, and there's one of them. So 3 times 2 uh, plus 1, that's going to be 7. So 6 minus 7, which is equal to minus 1. So the formal charge of each of these oxygens is minus 1. And as we stated before, the, the total charge on this thing is just minus 1. So we would write it in brackets and give it a superscript minus. And notice that the, the formal charges in this case also add up to uh, the charge of the ion. Um, 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 0 is going to be minus 1. So indeed the formal charges, the sum of the formal charges does indeed uh, equal the charge of the polyatomic ion.